Good evening Jokers, thanks for watching this episode of Jokers Physiotherapy. Today I wanted to introduce another research article related to Botox to the jaw joint. A lot of people get uh, Botox injections, whether from the doctor, uh, plastic doctor, beauty doctor, or uh, uh, various dental professionals. <clears throat> There's an interesting article I've discovered here. It was published in February uh, of 2020 from Scientific Reports. Uh, these, uh, there are two researchers from South Korea. Uh, they do, they do uh, have very uh, significant uh, interest in beauty and I think this may be related to that as well but they they have this research uh, article titled decreased mandibular cortical bone quality after Botox botulinum toxin injection which means Botox injection uh, in mas masticatory muscles in female adults mas masticatory muscles uh, uh, your chewing muscles basically and the, they've injected into two sets of main chewing muscles namely masseter which is this massive muscle here uh, it's got two parts and it did inject into superficial part of the masseter muscle and temporalis which is right up here which if you touch it and then clench you can feel the muscle bulges into your fingers and it's on both sides. By the way, your masseter muscle is the strongest muscle in your body and you can produce up to about 125 kilograms to your back teeth, back molars, and 25 kgs to your front teeth. Anyway, uh, that aside, so they decided that the people to recruit are the Young females of the ages, when they defined young female, the average age was 26.9 years, years old, and the, uh, the postmenopausal women, average age of 55.3. Uh, the young ones, they've recruited 39 people, and, and the postmenopausal female, they recruited 38, in a total of 77. They've divided them into a uh, small number of four groups of different uh, treatment uh, groups. Um, and they've, they've done, uh, I'll just go through, so four groups uh, of all females, 77 of them. So the first group had 12 young females and 10 postmenopausal females and they did a splint therapy so mouth guard and they defined uh, mouth uh, splint therapy as at least eight hours every night for 12 months second group had 11 young females and 12 old females uh, and they received botulinum toxin Botox injection into their masseters, both sides, and then temporalis, both sides, at the first time, and then six months time. So they had one, two in the first session, and then in six months time, they had another one, two. Altogether, eight injections of Botox of 20 mils and 25 mils. into their respected uh, muscles. Third group, 10 young and 10 postmenopausal females. They've received Botox. In addition, they did splint therapy of eight hours every day for 12 months. And the fourth group had six young and six postmenopausal females, and they advised them to do a habit control. So basically they advise them not to chew on the, on the pencil, 
you know, try and uh, chew evenly and things like that. Uh, they didn't do uh, active intervention uh, like Botox or spleen therapy. Okay, so what they found was alarming. And I, I have been uh, against, to be honest with you, injecting into the jaw joint, into masseters and temporalis because of uh, it doesn't fix the, the reason why you're feeling tight in the first place. But this research is saying that people who's received um, these Botox into masseters and temporalis basically had reduction in the jaw joint bone density. And that is a serious problem. Obviously, uh, it can make you susceptible to osteoporosis. Or I have some clients who are uh, suffering from some level of condyle reabsorption condition. And you'd wonder if they've had Botox beforehand. Often they say, oh, it's an idiopathic, with idiopathic condylar reabsorption, or uh, possibly it's to do with the hormonal issues. So in, if that's the case, there's a pathology known, such as thyroid and other conditions related to hormones, and therefore often common in females. But in this case, They've defined people with TMD, the temporal mandibular joint dysfunction, as people who's, who may not have pain, but have clicks in the jaw for opening and closing or chewing, or crepitus, meaning the joint noise. Uh, but they did uh, confirm by CT scanning at the zero month, the first initial consultation, and the 12 months when they when they finished the research to make sure that there was no uh, arthritis to start with. So, uh, this research is suggesting that um, uh, the, the, it, it also showed that there was a decreased mastica masticatory muscle thickness and therefore it means obviously it's it's got reduced strength to compress the condyles uh, against the articular eminence and therefore it may be reducing the mandibular cortical structures uh, density especially uh, the effect of the cortical the bone thinning was significant in both young females and also postmenopausal but the reduction in the cortical structure was more significant in the postmenopausal female. So, people in their postmenopausal stage, I definitely advise against them having Botox. It doesn't solve why you're feeling tightness in the first place anyway, but in any case, whether you're young or uh, or uh, postmenopausal, I think all bets are off. The uh, the incident rate, I I should check, but the fact that this is happening, and obviously it may be to do with the reduction in the size of the muscle because of the Botox, or whatever it is, it's literally uh, affecting affecting the uh, bone and it's meant to just thin the muscles out which I, I am against either way anyway because that tightness that people feel is often bilateral as they have done an injection on both sides all the muscles that are the tr main drivers of your chewing uh, it's often from my experience, comes from if it's especially on both sides concurrently, whether it could be stronger on one side or not, but if it's present on both sides, it's most probably a referral pattern coming from your neck. 
So, this is what happens when you just keep chasing to put the fire out and never find out why this symptom was fine, uh, happening in the first place. So if, even just looking at this result from a physical point of view, it shouldn't be dealt with by a dental professionals or, or entirely that is. Uh, don't get me wrong because there are certain cases obviously that uh, teeth are involved and there are dental professionals that deal with this sort of thing really well uh, without the use of Botox and um, but I, I'd highly suggest that the, the people who, who may be suffering from these symptoms of TMD uh, with the clicks to surely come and see a physio uh, or a manual therapist who can examine and consult you to find why this is happening why these symptoms are happening in the first place so even just to put the symptom out, for to buy some time to feel better, it is actually not recommended. I mean, obviously, I'm just exp you know suggesting from just one research article. So totally, this is uh, just based on one article, which is a um, retrospective cohort study. Uh, so I think the further studies need to be done, and even further number of studies may need to be done uh, and do a systematic review or meta-analysis to find out the, the totality of the, the, the effect, uh, positive or negative, but I think uh, it's worth uh, keeping that in mind as a clinician and also as a possible recipient. So, uh, Thanks for watching this episode of uh, Jocker's Physiotherapy and I look forward to sharing more interesting results related to the jaw pain or jaw dysfunction uh, in the next episode. Thank you. Cheers.